your account. It's good. Good, everyone. And if anyone has a question, I'd be happy to try and answer. You know, I've changed, I'm changing my program a little bit here in the United States where what I've decided to do, I know it really can affect a lot of many of you who live in Europe, Israel, but I'm gonna open days up during the week where people can come here and we can have a meditation class in the afternoon, go out and have dinner, you know, the weather's nice. I have a swimming pool, there's a building where I live. There's a lounge where people can work if they have to. And people can come from you know, anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world and just you know, rent an, an Airbnb and stay a few days here. And they can have classes, not, a, not so much on Zoom, but in person. So I'm gonna try to do this uh, and see what happens, see if it works out. I mean, they have, they've lifted a lot of the rules here in terms of wearing masks and all that stuff. And the only thing I would ask is that if people want to come to my classes here in person, they have to be vaccinated. That's the only thing I would ask. If they're not vaccinated, I can't have them here because I just don't want to take any chances with this coronavirus thing. That it's a big problem in the world. So pretty soon I'm gonna open this up. If people wanna come, they'd be welcome. I would hopefully maybe have two or three people at a time, because I don't think I can fit many more of that in my apartment. And also my daughter has to work during the day. And so I don't wanna really disturb her too much. But I'm gonna see if I can do this. I wanna open things up a bit, I, you know, to do in-person classes with people. And, but the only thing I ask is that if anybody wants to come here, anybody's welcome. They just have to be vaccinated against this COVID-19 problem. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? It's a perfect idea. <clears throat> Excuse me? It's a perfect idea to open up a little bit and get- I uh, think so. I really like the idea. And I'll tell you, frankly, I'm tired of staring into a computer and doing this. I want to have people in present. I'm also seriously thinking, I've got about three or four places in mind. I'm going to try to, you know, check out and see if they're, you know, I can start a center there. I don't want to do it in New York City. It's just the expense is insane. And, I, you know, when I was 40 years old, it was no problem. I could make the money. At this point in my life, I don't want to start having to run some multi-million dollar business in order to just live and support a situation in New York. But I was thinking of maybe Charleston, South Carolina. I was thinking of San Miguel Viende in Mexico, maybe Santa Fe, New Mexico. I would love to do it in the South of France, but I don't know if it's possible. Probably my favorite place to go to do this, but I don't think it would be possible to do that. But I'm going to check out these places and I want to start a center where, it, you know, people can come and, you know, spend time or even live there if they want. And, you know, today you can work online. You can live anywhere in the world, for God's sake, today. So we'll see what happens over the next few months. I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? Uh, Stuart, it's not a question, it's an idea, and I would like maybe that you talk about it. Um, the idea that uh, what runs in us, the, uh, and then the energy, has to do also with the personality. I can't understand you. You have to speak more clearly. The idea that the, 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 our energy has to do with our personality also, and we have a a word um, 
in modern Greek, which is the same in ancient Greek, and it is kalo. Dear, wait a minute. You know, in order to tap this energy, you have to get beyond your personality. Your personality will do nothing but limit it to your charisma, your frame of reference, what you believe, who you think you are. And the whole purpose of this meditation is to get beyond all that, to get to a place where you tap energy beyond time and space and all of what that imprisons in people. And, and you know, yeah, we always have personality. We live here, we're molded in a certain way. But that's part of the work is to get past that, to get into a state of true surrender, you know, letting go of who and what we think we are and tapping into higher energy, God, whatever you want to call it, and discovering what we really are on this planet, what work we really have to do here that goes beyond personality, you know, ideas of who we think we are and what we are and all of this ego stuff that really does nothing but create a lot of suffering for people. I, that's what I was thinking about the true personality, which is beyond all that. It's beyond personality. You'll always have personality, you know, it's what are you going to do? I've been doing this a long time. I have personality, I have things, you know, but you know, it doesn't interfere with any one of these classes. You understand? Or any of my interactions with people in my life. And I, I try to get past all that stuff. Although I did have a difficult situation this week with somebody, but uh, I was able to, in my heart to get past it. And, you know, and uh, somebody who really annoyed me <laughs> did something. And, but I, you know, you have to get beyond that because all of that stuff is what keeps us imprisoned here. It keeps the suffering perpetuating itself, the difficulty, and we slowly, gradually go beyond it. And it's like in anything you have to, in order to truly create in this world, you have to go beyond yourself. You have to get out of the way. I mean, you know, if you're an actor, you're a musician, if you're a business person, it works because you get out of the way. And then you let that energy determine how this, this stuff should work in your life. It works because you don't know better than anyone else. You can listen to everybody. You can listen to every, you can learn from everybody. And in order to do that, you have to get beyond your personality, beyond your ego, beyond your charisma, beyond what you think is right or wrong. I mean, when I was younger, in my early 20s, I studied acting in New York. And one of the things my teacher tried to drill into myself and every other student that was in the classes, listen, don't just speak, listen to what's going on and respond. And I think that's an incredible way of approaching life. And you can't do that if you're just full of personality and full of your ego and full of all that stuff. My teacher Rudy always talked about that too. You have to listen to life. It's the greatest teacher. Every one of you is an amazing teacher for me. And although I do most of the talking, I do it in response to the energy I get from people sitting here. It's not just me trying to convince you what's right. You know, that would never work here. Can't work. So don't be afraid to go beyond yourself. <laughs> the other side of all of us is a spiritual life. Is love, is joy, is everything that's wonderful in this world. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Spirit, it's more pragmatics about having the in-person classes at your place. When will those start? I please, you have to talk more clearly. It's 
it's probably the speakers or something, but just say it again. Sure. So when will the in-person classes start? Pretty soon. I haven't announced it. I have a class in the Americas, as you know, you used to attend them. And I have to make that announcement there too. And then I will organize the days I can do this. It's like I can do this on a Friday, a Saturday. I can do it on a, you know, maybe a Monday and a Wednesday. And then I don't think I would want more than two or three people to come on any given day at a time because I don't have the room here. And also my daughter is, she just got a new job. That's an incredible job. And that can't, you know, she'll be in her room doing this, but she can't be disturbed. So, and also if people want to hang out in this building, I have a swimming pool here. It's a very nice swimming pool. There's a lounge where people can do their work and they can read or whatever, you know, but I can't have people hanging around my apartment. I won't have that. They would have to get an Airbnb and stay there for a few days and come to classes. But it's going to be pretty soon. I would say within the next two weeks or so, I'm going to start this. I need it. I need to have in-person students. I need to do healing work with people. I need to do that kind of depth of work in my spiritual practice now. So I think this is very important. And I'm hoping that I can open up this opportunity for people to come and do this. So we need to make a reservation or an intent of when we're going to have to check with my reservation <laughs> committee here you know, <laughs> to come. Okay. And then I'm going to check out uh, Charleston. You know, I don't know why I keep thinking about Santa Fe. I know I lived once in San Miguel de Ende in Mexico, and it's really a, quite a wonderful place. You know, and there's a lot of expatriates that live there. And, I wouldn't have to you know, put in a lot of effort learning Spanish. You know, so there's, there's all of these things that are coming now, you know, and uh, I have to get stronger to do them. That's all, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of change. And hopefully it'll make things available. I know from Europe and Israel, it's rough to do this. So I thought maybe the South of France, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the south of France when I was younger, and I just loved it there, you know. Europe will take time. Huh? Europe, a Greek island would be good, too. I mean, uh, the Greek is one of my favorite uh, places. But uh, Europe will take time because every country is another thing, you know. And it's yeah, I know. All, and also, this country is handling the coronavirus better than anywhere in the world right now. And right now, there's like 270 million injections have been given in this country. You know, it's amazing, you know? It's amazing how they cut this together here. And Well, it's a rich country. and They can do stuff like that, you know? They can... Anyway, it's also a crazy country, but then where is it crazy? You know, also, everybody in Israel, please stay safe. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, I know in Jerusalem, Nelly keeps telling me that it's peaceful, but what you read in the newspapers is really horrible, what's going on there on both sides, you know? So please stay safe, take care of yourself, and uh, God bless you all, you know? Nobody wants to be in a country at war. You know, mm. although I remember, I'll tell you a funny story. When I, I lived in Greece when I was a kid, you know, I lived in a little town in southern Greece called Koroni. It was a very wonderful place, you know, and, uh, and I was there for four months, right? And when I hitchhiked, I left Koroni. I hitchhiked and I was picked up by the Greek army. And I went about maybe a hundred miles or something with the Greek army and we had a wonderful time. We went to a watermelon farm and had lunch and the Greeks are incredible. I mean, they're really a very open, generous people. And when I got to Athens, I bought a copy of the Herald Tribune, you know, and I found out that the Greeks and the Turks were fighting a war while I was there in Cyprus. They had no idea what was going on. 
I had no idea there was a war going on. And it was the Americans were backing this one, and the Russians were backing that one, and there was a big war in Cyprus. I said, oh my God, I'm in a country of war. And I didn't even know about it, you know? 74, 1974. <laughs> no, it was earlier than that. It was in the 60s. It was in the 60s. Anyway, uh, you know, uh, nobody wants to be in a country. And please, everybody, take care of yourself. Be safe. And just let this thing, this craziness, come to an end. And God bless you all. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Stuart? Yes? You, you didn't mention Norway like a place you will want to be. It's very nice here and it's too so cold there in the winter. <laughs> uh, and not now in the summer and the summer spring. winter is impossible, you know. But it's warm at home. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you can stay at my apartment and we can have yeah, food. Have, food. There's, there's eight different countries here right now. And I can't. <laughs> <clears throat> it's very nice here. I promise you. A piece you. of me and put it there, a piece of me here, a piece of me somewhere else. We'll mm -hmm. see. Anyway, God bless you all. Thank you for being here. And I just am just deeply grateful I can share my teachings and life with you all. And I, uh, I'm looking forward to see everybody on Tuesday. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Be healthy. Mm -hmm. And God bless everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.